Well, interesting times is something which I would like to start with. On one hand, you have a state that is looking to create more jobs. On the other hand, you have Karnataka, which is asking a hard question today. So out of 1.53 lakh engineering seats in the state, nearly 1 lakh seats are now in computer science and allied streams. Hiring has slowed, entry-level coding roles are shrinking, AI is beginning to automate what used to be the first jobs in technology. And the government now believes this imbalance could trigger the next unemployment crisis. So Karnataka is planning to cap CS-related engineering seats, arguing that unchecked supply, outdated curricula, and copy-paste course expansion across private universities are flooding the market with degrees, not, and this is important, employability. But this isn't as simple as, well, too many computer science seats. Because if you cap seats without fixing quality curriculum diversification into core engineering, hardware, manufacturing, semiconductors, deep tech and industry linkages, you don't solve unemployment. You just push students to other states. And tonight on Front Page, we are asking, is Karnataka preventing a crisis or admitting that India built one of the world's largest tech talent pipelines without building the jobs, depth and future skills to sustain it. Well, I would like uh, to have our tech journalist, Mr. Bala uh, Subramaniam, to join us. He's uh, been covering this for a while. Uh, Bala, a big warm welcome to you. Uh, on front page. It's so good to have you with us to actually expand on these, well, I can say very interesting times. Yeah. Uh, I would of course like for you to maybe first set the context for all of us. Let's yeah. start with sure. what triggered the discussion on engineering seat capping as far as the assembly was concerned. Yeah, thanks, Sudhi. Thanks for inviting me. So uh, this happened uh, a week back. Uh, uh, like it happened in the Legislative Council. Uh, it was an exchange between uh, <clears throat> the Higher Education Minister Sudhakar and uh, a BJP MLC Dhananjay Sarji. So basically, uh, it, it was talking about the disparity between uh, non non computer science engineering courses as well as uh, computer science related courses. So basically, the uh, BJP MLC was talking about uh, this disparity and uh, how it is skewed towards uh, private uh, uh, colleges and universities. So he, he was flagging this uh, thing saying uh, 1.53 uh, uh, lakh seats are, uh, Karnataka is offering 1.1 uh, and a half lakh seats but yeah. uh, one lakh seats are almost uh, computer science related. That is one particular uh, uh, umbrella figure we have. And among this, uh, within this, uh, we have uh, like 29 un private universities offering 33,000 seats, whereas uh, uh, 27 government uh, engineering colleges offering about 6,500 uh, uh, engineering seats. So that, that shows the 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 the, the, balance the disparity, which is the towards, huge yeah. imbalance. But also, Bala, yeah. Uh, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. The yeah. the government colleges where you're saying that there are about six thousand five hundred seats, engineering yeah. seats, as you just mentioned. Yeah. How many are specific to computer science? So, in uh, among the uh, six thousand five hundred, it's only like uh, ten percentage of uh, the seats are computer computer science related. So this is wow. exactly what uh, he was uh, highlighting, and so that's uh, only about what six hundred and fifty or something somewhere there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, as against thirty-three thousand. Yeah, exactly. So uh, this is not the first time uh, Karnataka government is talking about this. Government being the government, it has to be concerned about the long-term impact. So. Two years back, uh, Sudhakar has written to AICTE saying, mm. uh, asking the 
the regulatory i mean uh, the authority a regulatory body to not uh, have a check on uh, allowing colleges to uh, start new courses and start offering new uh, floating new colleges so it's it's like the continuation of what is happening since last two years and uh, uh, another thing that uh, we have to note here is B the bjp mlc was uh, telling how uh, he took the case of one particular university where he says uh, the the university has uh, around 4320 uh, uh, engineering seats out sure. of which 4020 seats are computer science related so this wow. ag again talks about how it is uh, sque sque uh, it, it's the the <laughs> private colleges are offering more to catering to the demand of uh, the technology okay which brings me to this point which is yeah. could a glut in cs related seats be a major reason yeah. for an unemployment crisis in the future let's address the elephant in the room yeah so based on uh, our interactions with uh, the academicians uh, the high uh, industry bodies and the hiring companies uh, the demand it could uh, relate to an unemployment crisis but if we'll have to see it in one particular context uh, context the demand is there the supply is there but the quality mm -hmm. is uh, a major issue uh, which uh, the stakeholders are uh, pointing at so without the quality uh, the supply uh, will be there because of the number of uh, uh, colleges sure. and the, the the seats so without quality the un unemployment crisis is uh, is, uh, is inevitable? Inevitable, inevitable yeah inevitable bala tell me this i mean two things that you just pointed out one is the fact that yeah. the employability aspect that is a question yeah. mark which brings yeah. us to the quality factor and logically okay connects to the idea of is this a wonderful way of churning out another form of an industry which is in education which is making money for private institutes i'd like to well clearly ask you this because this definitely jumps off the page yeah and also sorry i'll also like to ask you who is deciding the curricula quality if you could yeah. also maybe shed light on that for the yeah. viewers. So, uh, in Karnataka, there is uh, 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 reg uh, an authority that offers uh, these uh, uh, accreditations for colleges, which is Vish Vish Vishweswaraya Technological University. That is the first check. And then, uh, the recently, the state government has asked uh, uh, for an NOC uh, before applying for uh, the approvals. For new colleges, new courses. So ultimately, it is the AICT that is uh, the uh, uh, regular over bo overseeing body that will uh, have a check on all these uh, colleges and courses. So, okay. but uh, despite all these things, the ground reality has been uh, uh, far from rea uh, uh, far, far away from, from nice. quality. Yeah, far from nice. So, <clears throat> faculty shortages. <laughs> Again, the same thing was pointed out by the BJP MLC in the Legislative Council. He, he spoke about uh, faculty shortages, outdated curriculum, and mm. uh, these are the these are the things that is uh, differing from what uh, what it should be in rea in reality. Which then clearly connects to that fact which I was talking about, Bala, that at the yeah. end of the day is just churning out like a machine without yeah. actually having any quality checks whatsoever. Yeah. And what could be probably done that yeah. at least that is plugged as a gap. Yeah. Exactly. And also, uh, if you see uh, the, uh, it, it's, it's also uh, seen by a lot of people as uh, lot of industry observers as uh, private institutions making more money out of this uh, correct like making hay while the sun shines so sure. and and also a lot of academicians have told us that uh, the regul if the regulation is happening on ground uh, with, with in its full capacity this this kind of uh, 
a disparity can be avoided but uh, that's that's what the government is trying to bring in uh, with, by involving by, by uh, suggesting a plan to rationalize the number of uh, seats okay which brings me to this point which is since you just mentioned the government is trying so if the government brings a cap what would be the impact according to you bala and of course according yeah. to your discussions with a lot of the experts yeah so basically uh, if there is a cap uh, based on stakeholder consultation it's like if it is a collaborative effort then it will reduce the extreme number of uh, concentration of such uh, disciplines in colleges and it will restore the balance and it will also uh, put a check on uh, quality like there'll be more quality of courses that will be coming uh, available to the students and uh, the, uh, the 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 these courses will be more outcome focused than uh, okay. you know just just like a, a uh, a degree which anybody anybody would want to take it will be more focused mm. on the outcomes and uh, the, the employability side, aspect yeah the employ employability aspect and if you see the negative side it will be uh, if there is a cap or uh, all uh, observers are saying that student migration to other states uh, will happen and, and it will be inevitable and the other states also uh, another state, thought that came to my mind bala yeah the negative yeah. aspect is yeah at one end we are talking about huge investments into the states yeah. as far as yeah. the infrastructure exactly. is concerned so creating new opportunities as far as jobs yeah. etc all those things are concerned right yeah and yeah. on the other and, we are talking about this a cap yeah exactly exactly and also with the states uh, you know having this uh, soft fight for investments so this will add another layer of competition between the states like uh, like the neighboring states will start attracting more students from karnataka so things like these these might happen and uh, there'll there'll be a risk of uh, talent leakage from the state so okay uh, yeah okay so okay bala in in finality i would like to understand from you let's say personally because you have been covering this yeah uh what comes to you naturally as probably a balanced way we've addressed the problem that's been understood okay there is an issue yeah. curricula is not that great employability is not is not taking place yeah what can be the balanced way to move forward for the government yeah so uh, uh during the recent interactions everybody unanimously say that it is uh, it should be uh, take taken based on data driven rationalization uh, okay. there should be no blanket caps and uh, it, it it should take a collaborative effort so these are the major things uh, and there there must be stronger uh, enforcement of laws on the ground and mm -hmm. uh, since ai is permeating into all the Uh, walks of life uh, it yeah. they are also suggesting uh, inclusion of ai and uh, related courses in other uh, disciplines as well so that it doesn't other student stream uh, students from other streams won't miss out on other the emerging technologies okay well ladies and gentlemen that was bala a very very uh, astute and experienced tech journalist talking about uh, well a very important aspect which i believe is uh, affecting and can very deeply affect uh, times to come employability is where everyone puts in all the hard work for so if that in itself is not getting addressed then i believe that is something which needs to be looked into very minutely we would definitely like to know what do you feel as far as could be the maybe the balanced solution that can take place and ensure that we don't hit a crisis please do let us know in the comments below this front page by aim network like share subscribe and always remember think ai think i am